Okay. Whoa, I love the background. I love the background. <laughs> Oh, I had to do it. I had, I had to honor the movie. So, you know, so, 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 so I had to do it. Awesome. But, good morning. Um, good morning. Um, good morning. Steven and Hiram, thank you so much for taking the time to talk about Operation Seawolf. And I love this film. I mean, not just because of the cast, but the whole story itself was like fascinating because I'm, I like these type of movies, these World War II movies. So I really enjoyed this one. Oh, good. Oh. Glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> always exciting. You know, like you always just kind of sit back and, and um, you know, obviously when you make a movie, you want everyone to enjoy it. And uh, it's always awesome to hear when people say like, I really, really liked it and enjoyed the story. So that, that's the goal. So yeah, and my first question is for you, Stephen. How did you come up with the idea for this film? Because what really fascinated me is usually when you see a World War II film in like America, you always only get the mostly the American point of view, but in this one, you played the, you played it as a level playing field between the Germans and the Americans. I, that's what I found fascinating about it. I felt like we got both point of views like equally on the screen. That's what really drove this movie, in my opinion. Yeah. So, um, you know, kind of how the movie came about. Um, you know, obviously, there's always like several different things that you know pieces have to kind of drop into place. But I mean, really, it was uh, my producing partner uh, Andre Relis. Uh, with VMI Worldwide, uh, came to me with said like, hey, Dolph wants to play a uh, submarine captain. What do you, you got anything? And I kind of was like, so I took that premise of, you know, Dolph Lundgren, you know, playing a submarine captain. And uh, then I was like, okay, well, let's, let's dive in and try to find uh, a story that I think Dolph would uh, be amazing at. Um, you know, I'd worked with Dolph previously uh, on a movie called War Pigs uh, that we had shot several years ago. And, you know, one of the things that always everyone always said was like, Dolph looks so awesome in a, you know, he he, do, he goes behind enemy lines, and he wears a German uniform and he looks, I mean, you know, tall, yeah. blonde haired. I mean, he looks like a, a, a German commander. I mean, he is, you know, obviously. Uh, uh, sweet. Yeah, yeah Swedish. Sweet. So uh, I was like, okay, I know Dolph looks awesome in a, you know, a sharp uniform. So <laughs> the Germans have, you know, sharp uniforms and, um, you know, the German Navy is a little less, uh, you know, I mean, not many people know about kind of their actions. They're obviously very small Navy compared to ours. So that's kind of really how it came about. I was able to piece together um, a story and characters and we presented it to Dolph and he, he was, he loved it right, right away. So me and him both kind of just, dove in and started working on the character and the story that's awesome now Hiram you were one of the leaders of the U.S. Navy side in Captain Gravely how did you come up with get how did you get that role how did it all come about so uh Luke presented the script to me um uh I've I worked with him previously in a couple films uh The Great War and um the cool thing about it is uh when he presented it to me um I, I never even heard about uh, Samuel Gravely. And it was interesting for me because I myself in my real life am a captain in the United States Marine Corps. And so this, this being that Samuel Gravely is, is a real guy and he, he's the forefather, you know, he's, he's the first real life African-American officer in the Navy, you know, who goes on to be the first, uh, uh, African-American admiral, vice admiral in, in the Navy. And so this guy, he's my forefather. He, 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 he's the shoulders that I stand on. If it wasn't for him, there would have never been, you know, a Captain Hire Murray in the, in, the, in the Marine Corps, right? So just having that opportunity to play him was, was, it was just so, it was like kismet. It was like, hey, there's no higher honor, you know? So yeah. of course I jumped at the opportunity to do that. And then, you know, you, you're, you're playing a leader, you know, of, of during this time period, there are only two, you know, um, all African-American ships, you know, and then the US, USS PC 1264. And just taking that responsibility to do right by this man's legacy. Even the ship that we shot on was the USS Iowa, which was a ship that he actually commanded in real life. You know, it was, wow. 
it was just amazing, you know, walking through the hall, seeing his pictures, doing all of this, the, the curator of the museum and whatnot, you know, watching you, that having them on set telling you stories. It, 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 was, it was just awesome. Wow. I mean, that really brought authenticity to something of this caliber. You rarely ever get to see that in a war movie. Yeah. You know, <laughs> especially, especially an indie war movie, let alone any war movie. But to bring that authenticity to the role, I mean, that that's like surreal in a way, but on my <laughs> Yeah. So Steve, you also, um, we also had Frank Grillo in the film. That dude is appearing in every, so much stuff today. I'm losing my mind. <laughs> but what, 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 with you two guys, um, what was it like working with Frank? So, yeah, I mean, Frank, um, I mean, Frank is such, uh, an awesome, like he's, he's a great, um, obviously a great actor. Uh, an action star. I mean, that's, those are, those are traits that are, are clear. You know, what I was, you know, kind of when you first, uh, it was my first time getting a chance to work with Frank and, uh, you know, kind of like, you know, obviously I've seen him on screen and, you know, I try not to ever fanboy as much as possible, but you, you never know sometimes when you, you kind of first get to meet with the actors, you know, how, how they are. And I mean, Frank is just the most uh, generous, uh, amazing guy. I mean, right off the bat, he, he dove into wanting to talk about his, his uh, character and his story. And um, yeah, I mean, he's just a fantastic guy. Yeah, I, I, <clears throat> excuse me. I, I loved working with him. He's, you know, as, as an actor, you always want, um, you always want your partners on screen to be collaborative, you know, not have, you know, big egos and whatnot. And he, he truly is a team player. I mean, even, you know, when, you know, between takes and cameras turning around and whatnot, we take time, we talk to each other, he'd give me marriage advice of all things, you know, he was just a cool guy. That's awesome. Well, one thing I really liked about the film was not only the duality of this level playing field between the Germans and the Americans, on the German front, I sympathize with them in some way, because, you know, these are, these were guys who felt like, you know, they're doing this one last, last ditch effort to try to stop, you know, to, to overcome the, the allied forces. And, but once one scene that stood out to me was Lieutenant Reinhardt, when he kind of blamed himself after one of the U-boats go down and he actually wanted to end his own life, but it was Dolph Lundgren who kind of like motivated him not to, you know, just to keep going what you're doing. And I mean, that, that resonated with me because that's where I, at one point I actually sympathized with the other side you know, I, I, my grandfather was in World War II, so it was just like I know how I, I never would imagine sympathizing with the other side, but that that one scene there really resonated with me. How did that come about in terms of writing the script? Well, and I think um, I'm definitely gonna uh, and Hiram, I want you to kind of talk a little bit about uh, the military aspect of maybe why that scene is so important. But yeah. um, it it is, um, you know. It, I think it's something that all servicemen, no matter uh, what, when they serve in the military, you know, obviously ours here in the United States, but also in other armies. I mean, you're 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 fighting with the men and women that are around you, and and how do you you know overcome you know those um, you know uh, losses that you might have? How do you keep going forward? How do you put your own biases away, you know, and then focus in on you know the the mission that. Um, you know, you've been given. And it's just such a, I think it's a hard, it's a, it's a, it's a tough thing for, for someone that hasn't ever really experienced it. So, I mean, writing it uh, is a very uh, difficult thing, but I, I do think it is something that that's important for people to see. I mean, and, and especially see from maybe the side of what we, we would say is our enemies, you know, I mean, yeah. they go through the same human, human um, issues that everyone does. I mean, ultimately, you know, what we want people to take away from this film is understanding the, the the human commonality that we have, no matter where, what side you're on. We're not telling you to to root for Nazis here. No, we're not. We're, no, we're not. no, we're not. And at, and, at, and and at the end of the day, you know, uh, Hans Kessler, which is played by Dolph Lundgren, he he wasn't even for the Nazi political agenda. He he didn't like the Nazis. He, no, he, I, yeah, that was that was evident. Yeah, here's a man who who is a German officer who has a duty to Germany and a duty to his men. Okay, and as officers in the military, 
you know, we go by two principles, you know, we have, we have mission accomplishment and then troop welfare. Okay. He has a duty. He has a mission to, to, to accomplish, you know, and that comes first because all the sacrifices that will come later on will be for nothing if he doesn't accomplish that mission, you know? So we always have to think about our men. We always have to think about accomplishing that, that mission. And, and what Luke was alluding to, you know, being in the military, you know, what is most important to us are our brothers and sisters to the left and right of us. We can go through hell and back. We can do anything. But at the end of the day, we're, we're, we're more concerned about getting each other home. And you can see that on both sides of this film. You know, Kessler wants to accomplish his mission and he wants to get his men home. You know, and the same thing on, on, on my side of, 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 of the aisle. I want to accomplish my mission. I want to get my guys home. You know, even one of my sailors says to me, I want to go home and see my mama, you know? And yeah, I, I remember I, that. Line. You know, like, no no like, offense, Captain. I want, I, but I do want to go home and see my mom. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah. I love that. I, I love that line. It, I mean, in a way it was a comic, in a way it was a comic relief, but in the same way, you know, it's true. It's actually, it's true. true. You know, yeah. they, they're, they're fair, you know, although we're trained, to 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 forge on during these these perilous times we're still human beings we still have yeah. fear you know courage c c courage is not you know it's not the absence of fear you know it's it's accepting fear and still marching on during those times and that's what both of these leaders are doing yeah know? and that and this is why i i like this film compared to others because there is no propaganda like you said it hiram it's it's about the human emotion of war and how both sides go out with it. And yes, you made a good point about Dolph Lundgren's um, Hans Kessler when, and it's private, right? When he's meeting with one of the superior officers and they give him the Heil Hitler salute, he doesn't, doesn't even acknowledge it. That just, that just shows that, you know, he can care less about the third Reich. But I yeah. do like the fact that there's that little twist that's towards the third act as to why he even took the mission in the first place. And that, and that right there shows like his human side as well, despite the fact that, as you said, following mission accomplishment and getting the troops home, he, it's like he had his own hidden agenda as to why he took that mission. And I yeah. think that's what worked with the film as well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I really tried to tie in, you know, obviously, you know, um, and we portray this throughout the film. I mean, you know, Kessler has all these things that he's having to uh, deal with in terms of the mission, but kind of, yeah, that, that third act twist um, to kind of find, you know, you know, kind of, oh, maybe this is the real reason, you know, maybe, you know, he had this in his heart the whole time um, of what, he, why he wanted to take this on. I mean, I, I just think that's a very human, human characteristic. I mean, it's, yeah, you know, we don't necessarily know everything that, why, why people do what they do. And um, yeah, I mean, and plus, I, I also think like, if if we were all in that position, would we have done something different? I mean, we might all have been, we might all do what Kessler does. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So with uh, the movies coming out today, movies out today, actually, um, today. what's next for both of you that you guys can talk about? Uh, we have a film coming out called Come Out Fighting. It's uh, about the uh, 761st Tank Battalion, which was the uh, first all African American tank battalion during World War II, the Black oh, Panthers. Uh, stars myself, uh, Dolph Lundgren's in that as well. Nice. Uh, Alan Lutz, Michael Jai White, Tyrese Gibson. Uh, that's coming out soon. It's oh, you got a stellar cast there. I keep yeah. can't wait to see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, uh, yeah. So come out fighting. Um, we just we just handed it off. It's all done. We just handed it off to um, our distributor. And I mean, I, I think I'm even supposed to maybe find out today what their release schedule is going to be. So, oh, awesome. uh, I'm really, you know, I'm really looking forward to uh, obviously people seeing it, um, you know, uh, but much like Operation Seawolf, you know, it's fun to kind of bring, um, you know, following the 761st Tank Battalion, all African-American unit. I mean, it's fun to find these little, you know, stories in history and, and bring them bring them to life and let an audience be able to witness them. Um, Cause they're yeah. stories that haven't necessarily been told in the past. And, and yeah. it's time, you know, to, to bring them to the surface. I'm glad you're doing that. I, I feel like we do need importance of that little, the small little battles of the, of during the war that we don't know much about. Cause we always hear about the big ones on film, but to, for you to bring the smaller ones, I think it's as just as important when it comes yeah. to yeah. World war two films. 
So Operation Seawolf is out today, ladies and gentlemen, and you all need to check this movie out. It's I mean, it'll be out on digital on the 25th. Yep. And and uh, guys, I mean, you don't have to root for anyone here. You, but the, the fact is, you don't root for anyone here. You just feel the human emotions from both sides of the spectrum. And Stephen and Hiram, I, can, I can't thank you enough for uh, talking about the film. And when when comes out, come out fighting comes out. I hope to get to talk to you hopefully some some point when that comes out. So that'd be looking awesome. Looking forward to that one. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Albert. All right, and you guys, take care. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Bye bye. Bye.